So have you guys been feeling the spirit of Christmas? Yeah. yeah. That wonderful energy of feeling the celestial love reaching down as we open our hearts. Can you feel it? It's a wonderful time where we know we belong. We can feel the presence. We touch it. We stumble upon it. As we open our hearts, the celestial energy responds. And we love the Santa energy too, don't we? The Santa Claus, the big guy that loves his children so much that he gives presents to them. Isn't that like God to us? <laughs> I mean, isn't that symbolic of how we love God? Loves us so much, he's giving presents to us. We love perpetuating the Santa energy because it perpetuates the idea of this benevolent, loving creator. So it's a wonderful time of being the light and sharing the light and becoming awake and aware to it. Um, they said that Santa is really one of the closest things that many people can use to touch God, to see God, because they see the love in that consciousness. But it is love, and as we open to love, we open to the divine miracles of Christmas. The giving and receiving expands, and the more people who feel it and catch the light, the more they share and the more they grow, until by Christmas Eve, we have this global consciousness of Earth, where the energy has come alive because of the light within the heart that had been shared. It's this beautiful heightened sense of God and I are one, and God, <coughs> my father and mother, loves me, and I love my fellow man. How powerful is this energy? It's very powerful, and the fact that it's a global participation, there are enough who believe the Christian faith to make it global. And the people of other faiths feel it. They feel it at Christmas. doesn't matter what their faith is. They feel this wonderful benevolence and celestial intervention. They feel it. So it just lifts the entire planet and, and raises consciousness. We feel safer. We feel happy. God and I are one. And they said it's an exciting time. The music of our collective hearts is beautiful. And the angels actually stop and listen to the song that we produce. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? Every Christmas brings this gift, but you know, we get to choose. We are the beloved children of God with choice. We can choose to participate in creating this energy, or we can choose not to. Have you ever had a Christmas where you said to yourself and the world, I will not be joyful this Christmas, and they will not make me? Yes. <laughs> I am not playing. I will go eat pie and that is it. <laughs> it's always our choice. It's always our choice. But remember synergy. Synergy is energy that is greater than the sum of its parts. One plus one equals ten. When we participate consciously in the synergy of Christmas, then we're in the wave and we're riding the wave and the wave becomes greater and greater for us. Doesn't it sound like something we want to do? All right. The blessing you receive is greater than yourself, and it connects us with the, joyful, the global joy of oneness. Excuse me. All right. How do we get on the way? This is what we're going to talk about this morning. Last week we spoke of having a more conscious relationship with God, us leading with our best and then letting God do the rest, us letting God inspire and then let God participate with us. Do you remember? Have we been doing that this week? Still only 10%. <laughs> well, we are tithing church, so. <laughs> One of our uh, members last week as he exited, he said, when you were talking about God inspiring and then participating, I didn't have a pen to write it down, but I didn't want to forget it. So in my head I wrote, God is my inspirer, and God is also my co-conspirator. <laughs> and I thought, what a wonderful way to try to keep the idea of God alive, your co-conspirator, even as you walk. So, so as we open to that greater relationship, 
we need to understand this greater relationship that we have. So, we start with, my Father, Mother, God loves me. When you say it, you feel it. My Father, Mother, God loves me, and I am now full. Right? I share my love with the world. I now express. Now, I thank God for all that I am and all that I have been given, and now I have gratitude. My Father, Mother, God loves me. I am full. I share that love with the world I express. And now I give thanks to God. And we have this beautiful circle, don't we? We have this beautiful circle going. And it's wonderful, isn't it? But there's one aspect of the circle that we tend to overlook. And that's the I. I am full. I express. I give thanks. It's the value of the I, the value of the I am. I, the child, am the channel, I. They reminded me of the movie that we see every Christmas, and you all all watch it. It's a beautiful life. Everybody oh, seen it? Yes. It's a beautiful life where Jimmy Stewart is very old. Jimmy Stewart is given the opportunity to see what his world would have looked like had he not been there. And he sees that even in the smallest things that he does, he has impacted for the good of the whole. And had he not been there, the I could not have channeled in that way for the good of the whole. And he sees his value. And when you all watch the movie, do you ever inventory yourself? See your value? Some, 5%, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's very important that we become aware of ourselves as channels of the light. You have within you memories of people, places, and things. You have within you memories of when your heart was touched, people that you remember fondly. You never think about the people that remember you, do you? You never think that you are held in someone's memory as a benevolent being. That kind thoughts go to you for what you've contributed. And if we're going to Christ, we are going to Christ. If we are going to Christ, that requires us becoming aware of self. About 12 or 13 years ago, I was at one of my son's soccer games dreary, miserable day, have my little hoodie on, my jeans, tinnies, out in the rain as all good soccer parents always are. <laughs> soccer mom. And I went into the bathroom and there was a beautiful woman in the bathroom with her, she looked great, baby up hair, she looked great. And she looked at me and she went, I went to high school with you. I said, really? <laughs> and she said, and you look exactly the same. <laughs> I said, good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> and here was this beautiful woman, you know, and I looked at her face and I recognized her. And I said, oh, yes, of course, and you look lovely. <laughs> and we exchanged pleasantries, how have you been? And, and she said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a minister now. And she said, oh, that makes such sense to me. I had such a hard time in high school. It was really hard for me. And you were the only one that was ever nice to me. Aww. And I went, oh. In her mind, I held a place. Now, her mind did not register the experience as, God loves me so much, he sent someone to remind me how precious I am. It's not how she held it in her mind. Her mind held the memory, nobody likes me, but this Cindy's nice to me. You see? She saw the light, even though she could not interpret what it meant. The light that we share is always seen. Whether it can be totally received and understood does not matter. It's seen. When we share our love with the world, do you understand? When we share our love with the world, it is received. 